Okay, so this video is our first discussion of symbology, which I'd like to just say is the is how we paint the data. The data does not change, but we decide to change how the data looks um, on our map. And there are kind of a few main ways to do this um, graphically. Um, we start off with the different types of features we have, which are uh, points, lines, and polygons. We also have raster data sets, but I'm not including them in this um, this one here. This is mostly just for uh, vector symbology. So the first way we can um, change them is we could change the shape, right? If we have geographic locations that are points, we might say, well, these points are um, cemeteries, and cemeteries will be um, a triangle, and these points are libraries, and maybe they'll be a square, or these points are, um, you know, on a big map, you might say these points are uh, towns or things like that, and if it's a capital, maybe it's a star. Um, we can also change the shape of a line, and that's kind of tricky. Um, usually it just means that you would add some kind of, um, whether it's a stream and it tapers off, or it's a directional arrow, that kind of thing. Um, the shape of a polygon generally doesn't get changed at all, because then that would actually change the what it represents on the ground. The only time you see polygons being changed for their shape is if the actual area is being kind of extruded or um, stylized to represent quantity, you know, in a, in a thematic map. The next big way is size, and if we change the size of a symbol, we tend to think um, it's kind of it's quantitative, that if the dot is bigger, it's either more important or has more people living there or things like that the bigger the width of the river, then we think uh, this must be a, a bigger river. Um, and again, we don't generally change the size of a polygon because we would think that, you know, that would not represent the actual area that it's supposed to cover. There are maps called cartograms in which um, very recognizable shapes like the United States, um, you might augment the shape of a state to represent kind of um, quantitative data. I'll show you examples of that later. The third way is color, and uh, we can use color to kind of, um, again, sometimes we, we use it to represent quantity, sometimes we represent um, kind of quality. You know, if I, if I showed you a blue line, you'd probably think, okay, well, that's a river. If I show you a black line, you might think that's a road. There are some inherent kind of um, meanings behind how we flavor our data with different color. And polygons get pretty tricky, so I'm going to talk about those afterward because there are many types of color palettes you can use um, if you're going to actually use color in a polygon. The last type I want to uh, talk about is texture. And texture is similar to kind of shape almost, but all it really means is that you're not changing the size and you're not really augmenting kind of, um, you know, the actual maybe the actual shape, maybe you want to keep a circle, but um, instead you're going to add a different border or a, you know, a kind of patterned fill. Um, and in terms of shape, you know, the shape of the line might not change, but the texture, maybe it's dotted, right? Um, or maybe it's a, a set of very, very small dots. You know, you can actually change just the pattern of how it's displayed, and that can, that can often change uh, how we think about it. You know, maybe um, a single dotted line like that uh, a single dashed line like that might be a trail, and then a single dotted line might be, um, you know, an even smaller trail. Maybe this is a, um, a footpath that you can still bike on, but then a dotted line is just a footpath that um, you can't bike on. So, um, yeah, and then texture used to be used a lot more um, kind of before advanced printing methods people would use texture to kind of represent quantity. They would use kind of these hashers to shade um, more and more kind of quantity in a choropleth map. Uh, we still definitely do use um, texture oftentimes when we are using color, but we still want to represent another attribute on top of the color. You might use um, hashers so that you can still see the color underneath, but then you see this pattern fill on top, and that might mean you know, for instance, a, um, uh, a government zone off, off of the coast that you're not allowed to go on, or uh, it might mean it might mean some kind of jurisdictional zone that you're, you're not supposed to go there or something like that on a trail map or a navigational map. Anyway, um, I also want to talk about 
uh, like I said before, the, the ways we have of using color palettes. And color palettes are very important with human geography. It's kind of, it's kind of tricky. Um, first off, I'm just going to say that the next series is our screenshots from um, colorbrewer.org. And this woman, Cindy Brewer, made this great, great web resource um, that I encourage you to use. And what it is is it, it, it helps you, if you're making Corpleth maps, to come up with a, a color scheme. And it will give you the RGB, CMYK, and HSB values um, straight out of what you decide. It will help you decide... Um, you know, if you're going to use three classes, four, five, six, seven, however many classes, um, and it's it's a, it's a great resource. So the first type of color palette is a linear color palette in which usually it's one hue, maybe two hues, but usually one hue, and it's meant to represent one variable um, and kind of the quantities of that variable. So it's called linear or sequential because it doesn't vary hue. It's a sequence of kind of like lighter colors to darker colors um, and it might vary saturation um, here it's very saturated it gets desaturated and lighter as it gets lower um, but usually even if it varies um, brightness and saturation the hue is fairly constant the second type is called divergent and divergent is um, a color scheme in which we have kind of a neutral central color and um, and then it diverges to two different hues and usually those two hues have kind of a different feel to them so you know red and blue or red and green or something like that or um, you know depending on what you're trying to symbolize you might which you know if you were going to do a let's say percentage of um, popular vote to democratic and republican well you might use gray in the middle and go to um, red and blue but um, there are many divergent color schemes and different purposes for them the third type is called categorical um, or qualitative and a lot of people use these terms um, interchangeably um, I've kind of steered clear of the word categorical um, just because of the kind of the semantics of, of the jargon that I've been using but um, categorical you know means just kind of nominal categories in this case and um, you know the only reason I didn't use categorical is because we've been using a lot of ordinal data which is fairly linear right there's still categories that are not are um, subjective but they're they have kind of a sequence to them so anyway categorical in this case is qualitative but I would say it, it really means kind of a nominal color scheme in which every category is supposed to be differentiated from each other and not associated um, necessarily in the same way that these are all of these categories are kind of associated with each other um, in a numeric way these are disassociated numerically but associated by name so it might be kind of confusing it's probably easiest just to say yep linear divergent categorical good to go so the question is how do we use these right and linear like I said is usually quantities of things whether it's um, ratios or um, raw counts or percentages or things like that but the sequence you know usually goes from low to high where high, higher values tend to be darker, more saturated colors, and lighter values, or lo sorry, <laughs> lower values tend to be lighter, desaturated values. Um, that's just how they tend to be. You can obviously change them. Divergent tends to be when there is a deviation from a norm. So we're kind of looking at the bell curve, kind of Gaussian type of thing. Um, but not always. Sometimes it, you know, it might be whatever the average is, is kind of the neutral color. And then things that vary from that average um, can be represented by colors on either side. And so split voting patterns is my example of that. Temperature, kind of like that. I'm going to talk about that in a second. Temperature could mean um, this is the average temperature in the year. And then here are the, you know, here are the variations that are not common or something. Um, we're going to talk about that in one more second. Um, categorical is almost always used for qualities of things, right? Um, so types of names of states, uh, types of regions, types of industries, that kind of thing. So qualities of things, quantities of things, and then divergent is kind of this tricky one where it's usually ratios of things or deviation from a norm or things like that. Um, I wanted to add to this though that interval is another way of saying kind of divergent because 
divergent is almost purely like um, you're dealing with with kind of a bell curve and you're you're looking for outliers interval is more like this temperature thing or um, you know hypsometric tint or heat maps an example of interval or color varying on a scale would be um, for instance precipitation maps right that's an interesting one where we've got light rain usually is some kind of green and it goes up to this um, you know, maybe it goes through this to heavy, and then it's very heavy, but then when it gets slushy, it turns into a blue, um, and then a purple for heavy snowfall. That's kind of, it is a color scheme, right? It's a, I would call that an interval color scheme because the interval is what matters there. It's the kind of semantics of, of how intense something is, but also what type of thing it is. So it's, it's a little tricky, right? We see sometimes hypsometric tints um, on older maps where it starts f as very green for low, goes through yellow and red to brown to white, like in the Rockies. And that vaguely kind of shows you, oh yeah, low is maybe forest and it goes through grassland to mountain to snow-capped um, peak. Um, the point is, is it, it's pretty good if you can just try to try to recognize at least these words. If I say a linear color scheme, interval, divergent categorical just kind of have this in your mind that yep we're talking about quantities getting bigger and smaller right we're talking about colors representing variation on a scale we're talking about deviation from a norm and we're talking about um, different names or qualities of things so if you can keep that in mind you're doing good the last thing I want to say is that we're learning these color schemes in terms of classification kind of of uh, vector polygons and, and what I mean is we're we're doing core pleth maps right but these color schemes are not just um, related to core pleth mapping they can be these terms can be used in in other types of maps as well and there are more types of schemes that we'll talk about in the future